And now, our feature presentation. You are watching a master at work. Hello, everybody. My name is Rafael Chacinas Nuez, El Capitan Rafucho, and welcome to the venture. And ladies and gentlemen, we are about to witness another episode of Syrian Black Experience, Road to the Draft 2024, which in fact is going to be on the Motor City, Detroit, Michigan, because right now it is about to get down right now, ladies and gentlemen. And right now on this late night edition, which is like 11 o'clock at the Eastern time, 8 p.m. Pacific time. So it is a perfect time to be like in this Good Friday. Right now it's Eastern week and everybody's excited about it. So, yes, let's get into it. So right now I have a special guest right now. You might know is the co, you might know is the co-host of some Captain Jack shows. And of course, he's one of the amazing content creators to see that watch on this year. And of course, we just see with Protect the Shield, also with Captain Jack. And of course, he's going to show us for the last Sunday, which involved with all the trap show, which is very excited about it. So ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you the man of the hour, Mr. Radio Transplanter, Mr. Angelo. So how's it going? How you feeling? El Capitan Rafucho. I love the intro. Um, I, I got I got to give you a lot of credit. I was talking to uh, Captain Jack yesterday about you, and uh, we're both very, very proud of, of how much uh, you you've been able to work and get all of this space better. Your en your entrance is is great. I'm sure that as you continue on this yeah. content creation, you're going to get even more and more. Um, I love the sound you do the <laughs> you do the sound for the NFL <laughs> yes. draft, which is which is fantastic. Absolutely love it. Um, yes, for all of you guys who have gotten a chance to watch me the last couple of months, uh, you know me in the Raider world as Raider Transplant. Uh, I wear the green hat, as you always see, because green is the color of organ donation. And 20 months ago, my life was saved because of a life-saving liver transplant. Um, I only had 30 days to live, uh, uh, Rafa. So, um, you know, it was one of these things where just being alive today, just being here on your show, just getting a chance to talk with a good gentleman just like yourself about our beloved Raiders uh, is, is a blessing to me. So uh, I thank you uh, um, tonight on uh, Good Friday. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm excited uh, on Sunday night for the Captain Jack show. And I know uh, El Capitan Rafucho is going to be one of the people asking questions and commenting uh, on the chat room on that night. We're going to have uh, the number yeah. 67 pick overall, the one of the last people that Al Davis himself handpicked to be a uh, Raider. Um, that's Hall of Fame, Purdue Hall of Famer, Stuart Schwaggert. He's going to be the special guest GM of our entire show. He's broken down a lot of the fighters, or I'm sorry, a lot of the players, a lot of the NFL football players. And when, you know, you could agree with me, uh, uh, El Capitan, that when an actual NFL player, an actual yeah. person that played the game, an actual person was on the first ever NFL Combine, in 2004, when someone like that starts to do it, right, and breaks it down, then it's a lot of credibility to what he says. Because it's one thing for us, we're fans, right? We're watching it from outside, but we didn't play football, and we certainly don't know what it's like to be one of the people in the draft. And to have yeah, someone right. like, yeah, to have someone like Stuart Schwaggert come to the show and explain to us his expertise and why he would like the Raiders to um, uh, uh, trade for someone that, that, or, or, or pick someone during the draft. That would be great. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to bring in as a co-host someone that you know very well, uh, uh, Al Capitan, and that's uh, Chris Kimber of Protect the Shield podcast. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, very excited about that. But but let's get to it, Rafa. What, what do you, you want to talk about? All right, let's get to it for the draft right now because I just figured it out because right now with it here for the sound right now, I mean, the draft, it's almost there because right now it's almost there for April and the draft madness is going insane because there is a lot to do about it. So right now I just wanted to tell it about because first, who should be drafted at the number 13 on the Raiders? 
Right now, we have the new regime of Antonio Pierce and, of course, Tom Telesco because Tom Telesco has had a lot of experience along with the Los Angeles Chargers. But right now, between for Las Vegas Raiders is a huge step to put in out for the picks. But right now, it seems that they have to upgrade for the quarterback. Also, there is a lot of persons they want to see. J.J. McCarthy, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nitz, uh, Michael Payne. It's, I mean, there is a lot of... There's a lot of picks to have them to move on because right now we have to step forward for the defense, the offense, also for the wide receiver, running back. I mean, who you think that is going to be drafted at the number 13 on the draft of this year for the Raiders? Because we don't want it to seem like the same mistake that we got for, well, Jamal Gross Russell. Remember that guy for the draft is from the number one? I, I mean, that I was just that. like... Of yeah. course, of course. And, and again, when you think about the the Raiders and how many first round draft quarterbacks they pick in the history of the Raiders, which if you guys go back and rewatch a lot of the shows that I've helped co-captain with the Captain Jack Rackham uh, channel, um, I actually gave a historical lesson. And just last night we were talking about Eldridge Dickey being picked in 1968 in the first round. And then we picked Ken Stabler in the second round as quarterbacks. And then we also picked up Mark Wilson in the first round as a quarterback for the Raiders. We picked um, uh, um, Todd Marinovich as a first-round quarterback with the Raiders, and we picked Jamarcus Russell as a first-round uh, 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 quarterback for the Raiders. So I know that a lot of a lot of times it's very easy for people to say, "Well, that person is a bust," right? But I want to talk more about current times, and in current times, El Capitan Refugio, <laughs> in current yep. times, just as early as the 2021 draft. The first round took six quarterbacks in the first 15 picks. It was Trevor Lawrence, number one, Zach Wilson to the New York Jets, number two. It was Trey Lance, number three. And a lot of people like to forget that, that the 49ers traded three first round picks and a third round pick just to move up to get Trey Lance at number three in that 2021 draft. At number six, they picked um, Justin Fields for Chicago. And at number 15, they picked Mac Jones for the New England Patriots. And if you think about it right now, El Capitan Refugio, none of those quarterbacks are with their teams anymore except for Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence, the number one pick, is the only person left in the Jaguars. And that was just in 2021. It's only 2024. It's It's been less than four years. And the fact that it, – it, so this is what always scares me. When people always talk about how, oh, no, the Raiders, they need a quarterback. <clears throat> Me, Stuart Schwager, Captain Jack, Chris Kimber, a lot of us in the Raiders space, we actually don't think that a quarterback is a need. Now, if a <clears throat> really good quarterback were to drop to number 13, if Jaden Daniels, for example, somehow made it all the way down to the pick at number 13, Sure, but to trade away three number one picks. Uh, remember, again, the 49ers, the only reason why the 49ers got away with this is because they picked Brock Purdy number seven. But if they never picked up Brock Purdy or if Brock Purdy never became as good as he was, El Capitan Refugio, exactly. they would be terrible. Trey Lance mm -hmm. would be a bust. What would the 49ers do at quarterback? So uh, again, we we don't want to end up that way. We just we ended up we have a new coach, we have a new GM. We already I believe Aiden O'Connell from Purdue if you watch the 2021 Purdue tapes is a first round grade quarterback and you guys need to watch those tapes before you start saying he's not very good. If he would have went to the 2022 draft El Capitan Rabucho, Aiden O'Connell for sure would have been picked in the top 15 as a quarterback. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but because he played one more year at Purdue and during his final year, the team didn't do so well. Even though Aiden O'Connell still looked pretty good, but he didn't have as many weapons around him and he didn't have as as uh, as, as much protection. Um, it ended up that he became a uh, last pick of the fourth round. But people like to forget that a, a lot of people during last year's draft when they were trying to get Aiden O'Connell, the reason why the Raiders had to trade back up to the fourth to get him 
is because a lot of other teams wanted Aiden O'Connell. And now yeah. the only the only thing I can do, El Capitan Rafichu, is explain to people the facts. The fact of the matter is Bryce Young was the number one draft choice last year, and Aiden O'Connell was the better quarterback. In every way, Aiden O'Connell beat uh, uh, Br Bryce Young. So if we're comparing quarterbacks, Aiden O'Connell is better than the number one overall pick last year as a rookie quarterback. So I don't know why people get so upset about him when at the end of the day, if our worst case scenario is Aiden O'Connell becomes a backup, he's really good. If he becomes our starter, great, then we can give him a chance. But I'm one of the people that is extremely not comfortable with trading away three first round picks plus whatever to go get someone like a Jaden Daniels. The very most I would be willing to give El Capitan Rafucho would be two first round picks and a third. I think that's fair. I think if we do that, we give this year's first, next year's first, and a third round to move up to number three with the Patriots to get Jaden Daniels. I'm completely fine with something like that. Anything more than that, I think it's going to put us in trouble. But what do you think? I mean, for me, because there's like a lot of potential. Because if the Raiders were about to trade up, it's very likely they would target with we, Jed and Daniels. I mean, considering the next connections with the head coach and Tony Pierce, who recruited the quarterback at Arizona State. I mean, there's one tiny problem facing Las Vegas because each team picking up for the top three. They need a quarterback and not be willing to trade down. And of course, there's another teams like the Minnesota Vikings appearing for the run in the trade. They'd be adding like an extra first round pick, which is something that the Raiders don't have. I mean, look at this because it just seems like the report to say they're both desperate to move into the top number three. But I think that Antonio Pierce is going to be wilding as aggressive because if you get this put together at the number 13 and take whatever what's the best quarterback remain at the board because that will mean they're potentially taking the fifth or sixth best prospect i mean this year it became like the best of the best of the quarterback because they have michael Penis jr they got bonnets keller williams drake may jj mccartan and even Jaden daniels I mean, it's not going to be like to be patient. It is going to be wait and see what's coming up for the try as very logical possible. I mean, they're about to consider all the options because the price of the trade out for the top three will be likely expensive because are we ruling it out? I mean, if we never said about it, I think everything is on the table. And that's what Antonio Pierce said, the trade out for the draft. I mean, they're apparently like at a win now approach for the offseason because. They just went eight nine last season, adding two wins will like put putting them for the play amidst. And then like at a superstar like we're gonna lay for the team for the playoffs if he's a rookie. I mean he knows the importance of having strong quarterback for a team who play a Super Bowl. So like it would be likely aggressive to try and find out a solution until they have a long term one. But I think my choice is gonna be Jaden Daniels from the LCU because he got a lot of ability. Train also speed because nobody's seen that that performance at the LCU like making anything better. And right now we just got in and a corner. Garden Mitchell has no idea on Rico. Can you imagine how they rotate about these three quarterbacks? I mean, that would be insane to fit it out for the regime of Antonio. Hey, it cut out a little bit for me. Uh, El, El, oh. El Capitan, sorry about that. That last part kind of cut out. Yeah, 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 because it sounds like the very the audio because I know there's like the internet connection. But what I'm just saying about it because it really fits for everybody because can you imagine all the rotations for the three quarterbacks between Garden Minshew, Aiden O'Connor, and probably Jaden Daniels? It will be like very insane to go and out for the quarterback position of this season because right now we had to witness and we had to prepare the best for the best because right now we have – the best defense right now for the top because last season, which is 2022-2023, was a failure experiment between Josh McDaniels and Deb Sager. Right now with Antonio Pierce, we had to stay creative, to be aggressive, be at the top, and of course, well to be committed to society, committed to excellence. I mean, it's going to be like a great part. 
Hey, El, El, El Capitan Rafuccio, though, to go get someone like a Jaden Daniels, and a lot of people are saying because the price is going to be so high. Someone like the Vikings, who holds two first-round picks this year, they hold the number 11 pick and the number 23 pick, can make an offer to give up both the number 11 and number 23 and next year's first round pick <laughs> to move up to a spot as high as even number two to the Washington commanders. So in my opinion, it's really unrealistic for us to be even dreaming about getting Jane Daniels because unless Jane Daniels falls to number three, we would have to be sitting there hoping that the Vikings aren't willing to offer to make a trade up. Because the Vikings would beat us in any trade offer that we would give anyways. So this is why I think it's just time for us to move on. Instead of us thinking that, oh, you know, we really need Jaden Daniels. Again, in my opinion, Jaden Daniels would be a luxury. It, it, we have a nice house. So Jaden Daniels would be like this other house that we want to buy that we can make good for the future. But I already have a nice house. So since I have a nice house, I'd rather get a kitchen, a, a nicer kitchen for my nice house. And right now, we need to make sure we can protect our quarterbacks because our quarterbacks right now are Gardner Minshew, Aiden O'Connell, and we have Anthony Brown Jr. that we took from the Ravens. He was excellent in Boston College. He was very good at Oregon. He is a running quarterback, and he also um, took over for Lamar Jackson when Lamar Jackson got hurt. So we already have three quarterbacks mm -hmm. and one of them is a good running quarterback. But what we don't have is we don't have anyone to protect them on the right side. We need a right guard and we need a right tackle. Remember that we only have Thayer Mumford right now. Thayer Mumford, maybe we can move him to guard. Maybe we can make him play tackle. But we need someone else on the right side. We didn't sign Jermaine Illuminor. So we, we missed out on that. And we don't really have a talented starting right tackle, which is why I keep saying, and I've been saying it for the last three months now, that the number 13 pick should be Talisi Fuaga of Oregon State, 335-pound monster. It's about 6'3", 6'4", nasty. He's mean. We're going to talk about it on Sunday and how nasty this guy, but if we get someone like him, now, El Capitan Refugio, we are following the tradition of the Raiders. The way the Raiders were great in the 60s, in the 1970s, in the 1980s, and even in the 1990s, is because we had the best offensive line unit. So we have to follow that same tradition of just like when the Raiders in 1967 drafted Gene Upshaw. And then in 1968, we drafted Art Shell. And then in 1974, we uh, we drafted Henry Lawrence. Like, we, you know, that we need to make sure that we can keep ourselves in line for offensive linemen to protect the quarterback. That's why Talisi Fuaga is there. And even if we miss on someone like Talisi Fuaga, there are so many great uh, 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 talents at offensive line, El Capitan Refugio, there's Amarius yeah. Mims of Georgia. There's J.C. Latham of Alabama. Jackson Powers Johnson of Oregon. There's, I mean, I, I can, there's even in the later rounds, you can get someone like Tyler Guyton. Um, there's Cooper Beebe. There's uh, Troy Fatanu from Washington. I mean, I can go on and on and on, which is why they're saying, and a lot of the experts are saying, and a lot of the coaches are saying, yeah that the 2024 draft is going to have the most talented class of offensive linemen in the history of the NFL draft. Now, for the Raiders to not pick one of those in the in the first round would just be insane. Okay? Yeah, I mean, that's very great. And what you're talking about for Fuaga, I mean, we see a lot of the Barry guys like, JC Lightham, Olaf Shoot, and John Eld. I mean, there are gonna be like a lot of price to go for the draft season. I mean, and Fuaga is rising up for the draft boards. I mean, he dominated the senior bowl practice, placing himself for the possible 
top 10 pick. So he might be able to the Warriors with a pick at a number 13. But I think if he's still there, he could be like the perfect player to select because he played right tackle at Oregon State for almost two years. It will be slight for the starting for the position. I mean, Las Vegas Raiders have already had an elite left tackle as Colton Miller. Also getting like a guy who doesn't have to shift the left side to the right will be like the best case scenario for that position. I mean, he proved that he can dominate it, some of the best defensive alignment at this year draft. I mean, you could imagine if they want to move on Jeremy Illuminor. I mean, Jeremy Illuminor right now has to move out to the New York Giants. But right now, it seems that because they just signed for anything could happen. But I think Fuagas just became like a monster. I mean, the immensity of the speed and ability, it just became like at the perfect time. Because I know as a matter of fact, this could be like a plan B if we wanted to sign up for Jed and Daniels. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I, but for me, I just think that that's more of a plan A because I honestly, uh, it's unrealistic to believe that we would have a chance to get Jane Daniels unless we were willing to give up all these different picks. And I, I'm not, I, you know, Rafa, I am not willing to give up our first round this year and our second round this year because mm -hmm. our first round this year, we could pick up anyone from Fuaga. Jackson Powers Johnson. We could pick up Amarius Mims from Georgia. We could pick up J.C. Latham. We could pick up Troy Fountainow. There's so many good linemen that missing out on a lineman in the first round would be sacrilegious for the Raiders, okay? But if we also had to give up the first round and the second round, in the second round, we can get some of these other uh, uh, names. I mean, someone like uh, Jordan Morgan from Arizona or or Kieran Am Amagaji might 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 fall even closer to the late second. It, so there's so there's Tyler Guyton might fall in the early second. So there's so many other linemen we can get that to have to give up both the first and the second round just to go get Jaden Daniels it would be a very dumb move. And let's not forget that we're not done. We still need it would be nice for us to get another cornerback. Right, somebody who's a defensive mm -hmm. back, and I know everybody keeps talking about Quinion Mitchell and Terry and Arnold and Nate Wiggins and uh Kool Aid McKinstry, um, Cooper DeGene. But a lot of those cornerbacks, Stuart Schwagert's gonna actually talk about it on Sunday with us on the Captain Jack Rackham channel. And when he does, he's coming from the standpoint. <laughs> of being the greatest defensive back to ever come out of Purdue as a Hall of Famer. Um, this, this is a guy who knows that position, and he honestly doesn't believe that anyone would be good enough in that first round to even take at, at cornerback or defensive back. So losing the first and the second round would really hurt us, Raph. It would really hurt us badly. Um, if we just stay conservative... Even if, let's say, you wanted to get a quarterback. Let's say you felt like you wanted one more quarterback, which is fine. In the mm -hmm. second round, it's possible. It's possible that Michael Penix could fall. It's possible that a Spencer Rattler will fall in the third. It's possible that Jordan Travis, who, if you guys want to watch, uh, Florida State University versus LSU. When Jordan Travis went one on one against Jaden Daniels, Jordan Travis looked pretty good prior to his his injury. So if we were to steal someone like Jordan Travis in the fourth round of this year's draft, El Capitan Rafucho, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. That wouldn't be such a bad thing. And if we were able to pick up Fuaga in the first, maybe picked up uh, someone like. To Vondre Sweat, 370 pound defensive tackle out of Texas in the second round. Now we have someone who could plug the middle. And now our NASCAR package for uh for Christian Wilkins and Tyree Wilson and Malcolm Coons and Max Crosby mm -hmm. will be even better and they'll be even faster. So again, losing picks just to get Jaden Daniels is the same as buying another house. When you already have a nice house, but your nice house still needs to get the kitchen remodeled. 
So it's better for us to spend the money, Ralph, on remodeling the kitchen than it is for us to spend money on a down payment for a house that we're not even going to live in until the future. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah. And of course, we're talking about for cornerbacks. I mean, there is another one that I was like very interesting about it. So there is like a cornerback from Iowa State, DJ Tampa. I mean, that guy okay. is really amazing. I mean, for Iowa State, because that guy, he has like a very versatile, and of course, he has with a great movements, but he has a very decent closing, but he appears to be like a lack of true top end speed. I mean, he really charged it off with a press punch, and he does like a job of staying connected for the rules from the trail technique. I mean, he allows and the only issue about it is he allows separation to win this open with a playing for the back battle of off man coverage. But I think that he has a great land and size for that corner position. I mean, and I just saw for the film study about TJ Tampa from Iowa State cornerback. I mean, that guy is very great size. He has a very thick frame, and he plays good positioning through the road. I mean, he's using his hands with the stroke receivers to get into the hip pocket. But the only issue that was going about it, because he could be lazy at this pad level at several times, leading off of getting struck and struggling to quickly change direction. I mean, top cornerback prospects on that class, including for the quarterback. I mean, he shows up with great movement skills. He had a great flexibility to play in both men and Suns coverage, which is means but had to take care about it. When you got to play in men coverage, he often played press. When he shows up with the ability to move his laterally matches and he's lent to disrupt the receivers as they work downfield. When he was playing at the Good timing. Playing off of the receiver's hands and the ball skills. When he was like defending the run, Tampa used this size for this advantage. As a cornerback, he looks to deliver like a big hit, whatever he can throw the dead times. He does it like very rapid enough for a lot of street yards. But I mean, he has a very size and playing style that NFL teams are looking for. Whatever he has defense to run the physicality or strength, or how do you lose his length in coverage? Tampa has a lot of upside, but he needs to hit short off with his tackling and play more consistent pat left. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I'll, I'll come down right for you. Uh, TJ Tampa, when we were grading him, uh, TJ Tampa, for all of you guys who are on the chat room right now, thank you so much. Chat lives matter. So uh, TJ, yes, TJ uh, Tampa is his name. Uh, when we were looking at him, we were grading him. We felt like you can actually steal someone like TJ Tampa in the later rounds. You can get him. Maybe he might even drop in the in the fourth. You just don't know what. If, if a lot of the early cornerbacks uh, start to go early, someone like TJ Tampa, Mike, Mikey Sanistrill, even Nehemiah Pritchett from Auburn, um, uh, Kyrie Jackson from Oregon, a lot of these really good cornerbacks. There's Bo Torrance, which is someone that um, that uh, uh, Stu, Stuart Schrager is going to talk about on Sunday at the Captain Jack Rackham uh, channel at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific time. So, like I said, we're really going to cover a lot of the things you're talking about. But TJ Tampa, that's very good. Al Capitan Rafucho, TJ Tampa is someone we looked at. And he is somebody who, again, this is the reason why we don't want to give up draft picks. There's just, if anything, remember right now, uh, we currently, as the Raiders, own eight draft picks. We have one for each round, and we have two in the seventh round. We would prefer it if we could take the eight total draft picks and turn it into 10 draft picks rather than giving up so many draft picks and draft picks of the future to go get someone like Jaden Daniels. So when we're talking about this type of stuff and you bring up a name like TJ Tampa, that's the reason why we don't want to give up anything. We don't want to give up anything to give any quarterbacks. The other thing, too, is you, you you remember me mentioning some of these other quarterbacks that might fall in the later round. Someone like Jordan Travis, who uh, 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 Tony Shepard here on the chat, he, he likes the idea of uh, Jordan Travis on the fourth round, right? So yeah. 
you have to think about some of the other <laughs> positions we do still need. And one of those, El Capitan Rafucho, that we need is linebacker. We need another linebacker. I know that we have Roberts to play and we have Divine Di Diablo, but in all honesty, I don't think a lot of people are that happy with Luke Masterson, so we're probably going to move on from him. And we really need to – remember, you need more. You need more because you don't know who's going to get injured. You don't know who's going to end up uh, – I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if – we ended up picking picking up two extra linebackers just in case because there's so much talent it, it, even in the later rounds. In the later rounds, when we're talking about the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round, the sixth round for a linebacker, one name that you guys might hear us talk about on Sunday, if you want to start looking it up, is Michael Barrett from Michigan. Michael Barrett from mm -hmm. Michigan is one of those hybrid-type uh, 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 safeties, uh, our uh, uh, linebacker safeties that Stuart Schwaggert, he's the one that actually taught me about Michael Barrett. I wasn't even looking at Michael Barrett until Stuart Sch Schwaggert covered it with me. And he kept saying, look, uh, not a lot of people are even <laughs> looking at this guy, but this guy is going to be uh, amazing. So, uh, because of Stuart Schwaggert, I started looking at Michael Barrett and my early comparison for, um, for him is uh, Antonio Pierce. I actually think that Michael Barrett could end up being an, a, a linebacker style of an Antonio Pierce. Even though he's smaller, he's very angry, He's very angry. tackles well. Um, so linebacker is another position we need to have. Uh, what do you think about that, El Capitan Rafuji? Yeah, exactly, because when you remember about the position for the linebackers, I mean, that show was very great. Because right now we just had Robert Spillane, also we got defensive edge, Matt Crosby. And talking about for this topic right now, because about for the free agency, I mean, there's a lot of the very interesting moves right now because we just got Christian Wilkins for the Miami Dolphins. And I'm very looking forward because where they signed Christian Wilkins, probably they just had a, like a great reaction. But I mean, if, if we got to design up for a more quality starters and they're just like upgrades up that we have, but Honestly, we haven't done that because I'm not saying that those moves are very bad, but even if it was smart, they were like the type of moves with a bunch of the Nets here. I mean, that draft will improve things right now, but I feel like Christian Wilkins is pretty much the star, and I will take that because we didn't have like a lot of holes and having like a monster. A monster defensive tackle will free it out for the defense. I mean, we have a lot of young guys could have the ball for the very good spot. I mean, it's not very reliant like the young guys, but also remember like a healthy Crosby as well. I mean, the offensive line is pretty scary because Mumford already looked very solid as a starter, but we had to have clear hole on the right side and lack depth because if Tolesco doesn't say much because he's no very security and Ty lived about those things, but I think for the free agency, gonna happen a lot at this one. But it seems that they're gonna the fits enough for the defense and we should sure around the teams. But also, there's one team that I could have pursued about it. Whenever that guy Seven Howard for the Miami Dolphins, I mean, if they're gonna put it, if they're gonna put it on the free agency, if they're gonna put it on being released, because after he just been released from the Miami Dolphins. I mean, it just said for a lot of teams that could be interesting about it. And there is a fun fact about it. Xavier Howard has a very good experience with Batchy Graham and has very solid continuity for Dolphins for a while. I mean, I know he's getting a lot for the 30 years, but he really can help the ball for the, some of the younger guys. and maybe and push. Hold on, El Capitan Rafucho. Can I just ask you real quick? Is, uh -huh. it, is Xavier Howard still a free agent or did he sign with the Green Bay Packers? Can you check on that? Yeah, I'm gonna let a check about that because I'm um, Xavier Howard. I just see whether they got it right here because I know that's I know they have it to go for that because right now it's still like a free agent. It's still a free agent. It still says that he's a free agent. I was I was yeah. under the it must have been Xavier McKinney then that signed with the yeah, Green Bay Packers. I was still okay. for the saving Howard. Okay, so McKinney, Xavier Howard, you're absolutely correct. Xavier yeah. Howard would be a very good pickup for uh the uh las vegas raiders because he also i believe he played for patrick graham did he not el capitan Rafucho? does it say that Xavier howard played for patrick graham 
in New York? I think he did. So if he yeah, played he with Patrick Graham, that that's a very good uh, uh, point that you're bringing up tonight, that Xavier Howard would be a very good thing, uh, a very good player for us to have. Um, I'm going to have to double check on that now. Um, I didn't realize that he was still a free agent. I was the, under the impression that he had already been signed to someone else. So I didn't know that he was still out there. But if he is still out there, as long as um, we're willing to, you know, I mean, he can't, he can't be over. We can't overpay him because we have to take care of our own. We Remember, we still have to make sure that we have an extension for Robert Spillane. We have to still have a contract extension from Malcolm Coons. Um, we have to make sure that we – Nate Hobbs is someone I don't want to lose. We have to do a contract extension for Nate Hobbs. So we can't spend a lot, a, a lot, a lot of money uh, yeah. uh, to get someone like Xavier Howard. But if if Xavier Howard would like to come and play, that'd be that'd be pretty nice. That'd be a nice thing to have. I mean, because there is a lot of difference. Because there is not going to be a mistake. Because Xavier McKinney is signing like a four year. But we're talking about for Xavier Howard, who has a really good connection with Patrick Graham, and. There's another team that are really interesting, which is the Houston Texans. But I think if we get to choose it for Las Vegas Raiders, that'll be like very insane at all. Because looking for the ability that he has, I mean, if you're going to happen, because he's one of those free agency quarterbacks, it it's going to be expected to be strong, but it is about to be like an unexpected boost. I mean, if, if it just, just released, would have had three years or even of his five year. Not a million contract that is tough for the new year. I mean, it, it should be like the very trade about it, but I think unexpected, the unexpected, but it should be like the very good soon because Howard didn't have a great season in 2023, but he does have a strong track record. He just had like a one interception in one of the past two seasons. He had three seasons, which has had at least five interceptions, but of course, he had a great history with Howard. But it might be like in the market for the cornerback. So it's going to be like a show possible interest in for the Howard. But it's going to be like a great pursuit. But it's going to be like an unexpected boost. But this athlete can do anything could happen. I mean, it's going to be like a free agent that also has got it. Because right now he can still be like a light. But right now it's not how to dress for the biggest weakness of free agency. Including the quarterback and defensive tackle. But they have it added as the quarterback. Well, is it not over? The market is straight off of the very quickly. I mean, it didn't like what it isn't like a long term solution is turning out for 31 during the season. But he really could probably be a like upgrade over. We're going to make it on the roster. I mean, he couldn't make it a lot of sense for a defense that didn't need like more aggression on it. Well, yeah, no, I mean, and we are aggressive in the front side when it comes to the trenches mm -hmm. and the D line. With Christian Wilkins, with Tyree Wilson, with Malcolm Coons, with we re-signed back Adam Butler and John Jenkins, who did very well for us in the later part of the year. Um, and then, of course, we have our leader, Max Crosby. Uh, Robert Spillane is a very aggressive uh, 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 hitter. Um, so um, Tony Shefford uh, on the chat is saying that Hondo Carpenter, Carpenter keeps talking about how the Raiders are <laughs> out there seeking, you know, right now they're looking for maybe – uh, a trade of some sort for other players. But like I said, this, he, he, until we can lock up our holes, which is the right side of the offensive line, because I believe if you could look it up for me, El Capitan Rafucho, I'm not sure, but I think Dalton Reisner, who's a right guard, is still available on free agency. And also Makai Becton, who's a right tackle. I think he's still available on free agency. So those prices for those two players might start to go down as we get closer to the draft and um, you never know if they, I mean, again, if the Raiders end up getting, let's say Dalton Reisner, uh, 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 right guard and Makai Becton, that helps our right side already uh, with Mumford there too. And then now if you want to go ahead and talk about possibly using some picks to trade up now, it makes a little bit more sense. Right. But without that, without shoring up that right side, it's very uncomfortable to think about trading up for anything. Um, and one thing that we still, in my opinion, we still need is running back. I'm sure that not a lot of people are, I mean, you know, Zamir, uh, Zamir White, we're going we're, we're gonna to see how good he really is. He did extremely well in the game 
that proves how well Zamir White did was in uh, the Kansas City Chiefs game on, on Christmas. He was fantastic. Um, we don't know how good Britton Brown is yet because he was injured, and we still have him. He was our seventh-round pick on the same year that we picked up Zamir White in the fourth round. So they're both going into year three now um, as running backs. But we just just picked up Alexander Madison. So he's going to be somebody in the room that's going to be competing. Um, and then, uh, you know, really, if you think about a running back room of Amir Abdullah, Alexander Madison, Zamir White, and Britton Brown, I don't think that's very complete yet. I think we need to get more, especially, especially if – we end up moving on from Britton Brown and Zamir White. We need to get more. So I wouldn't be surprised if um, we picked up at least one running back. Uh, Stuart Schwager kept telling me that we need to pick two running backs. Um, and that's he's the expert. I'm not an expert. Stuart Schwager's an expert. And he said we need to pick up at least two running backs. There's a couple of running backs that he's really excited about. We're going to talk about it again on Sunday. Uh, on the Captain Jack Rackham channel at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if when I'm thinking about running backs, I know that currently right now everyone is very excited about Trey Benson, 6'2", 216, ran to 40, I believe, in like a 4.4 <coughs> or 4.3. Um, but there are a lot of other running backs out there. I know that Jonathan Brooks, who was injured, didn't get to go to the Combine, but he was very good. Um, also, uh, Blake Corum, a lot of people are excited about Blake Corum oh, yes. because he, he actually lifted the bench press as a uh, higher than Joe Alt, the, the <laughs> left tackle. So a lot of people are saying Blake Corum's a perfect guy to get. He's a stronger version of maybe like a Josh Jacobs. Um, there's other ones out there too, though. I, I mean, I, I, myself, I, you know, I, Kind of like the Ray Davis kid. I think he was coming out of Kentucky. Um, there are some other people in the in the later part, but Stuart Schwager was uh, was naming some names that people should pay attention to, like an Isaac Garendo. Um, he talked about it on the uh, Gra Graf show, uh, the Graf and Wasted show, or the Graf and Stew show. Um, uh, 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 but he, you know, he's going to talk about it on Sunday at the Captain Jack Rackham show. He's going to talk about people like Carson Steele from UCLA. He's going to talk about um, Tyrone Tyrone Tracy from Purdue, um, you know his alma mater, right? So, so yeah. again, there's a lot of running backs, and 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 I think I think that the Raider Nation should be talking more about running backs and cornerbacks and linebackers, and you know, uh, there's so many other positions. Again, we're not complete yet. We're not complete yet because we still need depth. What happens in fo football, El Capitan Refugio? In football, everyone gets injured. So yeah, if an exactly. injury happens, we need someone to be able to fill in the <clears> spot. <throat> Don't forget that what made the Detroit Lions so good in the last three years is because the Detroit Lions kept making good draft choices. And since they were they were heavy, when um, their linebacker, Anzalone, was injured, they were able to put in their first rounder, Jack Campbell, uh, right in the spot. So we need to be able to do that too. What if Robert Spillane gets hurt? You know, we need to make sure that we have someone else backing up these players, right? So this is what I'm saying is, and now at running back, we're not sure what's going to happen with running back. Running backs get injured all the time. Wouldn't you agree, Al Capitan Refugio, that last year when we watched the NFL, how many running backs did we see get injured? Right away, right? Nick Chubb gets yeah, injured. Exactly. J.K. Dobbins got injured. Like, right off the bat, <clears throat> even Josh Jacobs got injured. So, running back, we, we only have four. We don't have enough. You know, and, and sure, we have Sincere McCormick, uh, but we, you know, again, we don't even know. Like, we need to pick up running back. So, yeah, uh, for it. me, we at least need to get one. But is there any running backs that you like in free agency or for the draft since the draft is coming up? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ability right now, but you had. I'm very glad that you mentioned Blake Corum because every time that I just say on the social media that JJ McCarthy, I was wrong about JJ McCarthy because it's not like a very light athlete. But don't be surprised if Blake Corum could be like the bigger surprise because he has a very caliber running back. I mean, it's very noticed because 
he usually he doesn't turn on this on the, all the way to teams but breaking tackles. I mean, it could have been like the very perfect because I know for the, the press conference, hey, he runs like the 453, 40 dark jash. I mean, that was just like very noticed because I know there's a lot of great quarterbacks, also cornerbacks, linebackers, but also there's a lot of running backs on this class. But people didn't want to see where the word corn falls, but I don't think it's going to happen. But I mean, uh, it's not very weak at all, but the only concern about for Blake Corrin is size for the age for the position. I mean, he only decided for the stay another year in Michigan, but I think the chemistry between him and McCarthy, if they're going to draft him, it will be crazy. I mean, if he got a lot of miles on those legs already, pause, but I think it's very excellent player, but even some players and not very slow because he's being like an excellent player, but I think it's going to be like an amazing out of draft number two, but it's going to take a lot of shot to everything because I mean he clearly lost a half step in his season in jury, but also he just run it to the top for the last few years. So it just find it very difficult to see how they're gonna translate it. I mean, the highest good that they take about it. I mean, Corey was 82 of 85 qualifying running backs after a contest per rush last year. I mean, they were keep it like at a Trey Benson, Jilly Wright. Jonathan Brooks, Marshawn Lloyd, Braylon Allen. I mean, it shouldn't be like a more even because I think the price is very too stiff for the like a serious defensive talent. And if they're gonna make it for a running back or something to get a missed out for those guys, I mean, he's like the very bruiser. Decent speed, also very good at pass protection. I mean, it could imagine a lot of this one. Yeah, no, and a lot of those names you mentioned, like Jalen Wright. I think Jalen Wright might have been. I don't know if he was the fastest at the combine because he ran, I think, a fourth, a 4.32 or something like that. And then there's Isaac Garendo, who also ran, I think, a 4.35. So I'm not sure, but any one of those guys uh, could be uh, very good. But, yeah, I, I understand what you were saying about Blake Corum. Um, at the same time, though, any any running back that can bench more than the number one left tackle uh going into the combine that's going to get drafted that's pretty impressive that's that's pretty impressive for someone who's only 5'8 5'9 205 pounds that's uh i i think that blake corum is going to shock a lot of different people but you might be surprised al capitan Rafucho, that uh jim harbaugh you know he loves blake corum so blake corum might actually get taken by the chargers anyways he might yeah, go as exactly. he, he might go as early as early third or maybe even late second. I mean, he just, he absolutely loves Blake Corum. He doesn't, he doesn't want to pass up on someone like Blake Corum. So yeah. So don't be, don't, don't be surprised at all. If Blake Corum ends up getting taken. Yeah, uh, that's exactly. And I just see it for a lot of love in the channel right here. So let's just see for the comments right now. Dana Barry's in the building. Salute Dana Barry. Also there's Robert Pena's in the building. Tony Shepard has it going. Rafa and Angelo salute. Also, they say Tony Shepard is say keep hearing this class is maybe one of the best ever. Also, I agree with that. It. Also, Tony Shepard is say Hondo Campeter Tonka like Raiders had offers on the table for a couple of players right now. I mean, that's gonna really happen. Also, there is another fan right here to say Boston fan for life. What's up with Capitan? I mean, there's a lot of love because whatever you say about it, chat lives matter, and I agree with that. I agree with that. And of course, there's a lot of things that had to go for it because right now we're had to the moving off from the draft. I mean, yeah, I know it's very like very important to take like the great players to do it like this one. So I just really thought that they could move it to great positions, great ability, and of course we had to take those athletes at the top because right now it is the perfect time to be like very aggressive also you need to be like very prepared but also there's a lot of go for it because right now it seems that also it could be like a, a great action right now but it seems that it could be like a very option but you have to be careful for this like the draft picks also for the cap space which is like how the mouse for it because right now they just cut it out with brian hoyer jimmy Garoppolo. they just cut it out for some players to save space on the money cat space for that season. 
Yeah, no, we still, I think uh, the last time I looked at, and for any of you guys who are listening to this, you could look at over the cap. Um, <clears throat> if you look at the over the cap site, I don't know if you look at that, Al Kaftan Refucho, but um, mm -hmm. over the cap, it shows you every week how much is left. So I believe the Raiders, because the Jimmy Garoppolo cut had already happened, we have 26 million left. And you have to remember that part of that money has to go to our new rookies. So if we sign eight new players or 10 new players, part of that 26 million has to go to them too. And like I said before, we still have to pay for Nate Hobbs. We don't want to let him go. We still have to make sure that Malcolm Koontz doesn't leave us, right? We still have to pay for him. Um, I don't know if we really want, I mean, it depends, but if we want to keep Divine Di Diablo, he's coming up on an extension year. Uh, we definitely, you know, I, like I said, Hobbs to me is important. Very, very, very important that we sign him first. Um, yeah. And then Malcolm Coons, we have to, we have to extend him, and that's going to cost money too. So uh, you, that's why I'm saying that the draft picks are so important because depending on who we end up losing, remember, like this year, we already lost Amik Robertson, we lost Illuminor, we lost, you know, there's a lot of different people that left. Josh Jacobs was the biggest name that left, right? So. We can't just use up the money. <laughs> uh, El Capitan Rafucho, we have to make sure that we have enough money to sign the rookies and extend the current players. So uh, hopefully, hopefully there's a Makai Beckton or a Dalton Reisner or like you were saying earlier on the show, Xavier Howard. Hopefully they want to play for the Raiders for not, you know, for maybe not a lot of money. Um, but if they're if they're looking for money instead of winning, then they probably should go somewhere else. But anyone who's a free agent that wants to win right now, they should definitely come to the Las Vegas Raiders because the Las Vegas Raiders are ready to roll. We're ready to win right now. Just win, baby. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. And, of course, I just wanted to tell you because we had the last topic because right now it is like – because it's been like at a 15 minutes right now, but – Let's see for another comment right here. Say, Tony Shepard, you guys have done your homework on these players. Know them better than I do. Salute. Yeah, there you go. So I just figured it out because the last topic, I just wanted to talk about like every time that I just step it as a content creator because in some of the latest live streams that I just talk with some amazing content creators like We Raider, also the Go 209, also MC Raider, Power Raider, and of course, I just wanted to tell you about this. What it defines to you the right away? Because right now it is like, what are those questions as a great fan of the Raiders? Because right now we just watch it like the entire football. Because whatever happens in September, October, November, even December, but if it comes to NFL football season, but if it comes to Black Sunday, it is the perfect time to see the Raiders in action. So I just wanted to tell you. Raider, transplanter, as known as Angelo, what it defines the Raider way for you? Well, it, it, it's it's it, that's a great question, Al Kaptan Rafucho, and it's a great way to end our, our our show for tonight because I had Power Raider on last night, and Power Raider was yeah, on the uh, Captain Jack Rackham uh, channel, and he was talking about all the different outreach work that he does, all the different free events that he joins to continue to promote the Raider way and the Raider nation. And I definitely think that the Raider way is something that, that a lot of people, a lot of people that don't realize or don't understand is that you hear this before that there's 31 teams, but then there's only one Raider, right? There's only one Raiders, right? And I think part of the reason why we've been like that is we, we are football. The Raider way is football. The reason why people watch football is because of us. We started it in the 60s with the AFL, uh, with what Al Davis did, the commitment to excellence, and us being able to do things like having the first ever black coach, having the first ever Latino coach in Tom Flores, right? Um, we, we, you we, know. you know, we we kept doing things different. Uh, we had the first ever female president in Amy Trask. Like, and and right now, if you look at our current staff, we have a uh, 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 black head coach in Antonio Pierce. We have Champ Kelly in our uh, as our assistant GM. We have Sandra Morgan as our president, and she's half Asian and half black. I mean, we just do things different, and we're very positive. 
The Raider Way is a very positive organization. We are a forward-moving organization. We we don't say no to anyone, but but El Capitan Rafucho, we ch- we check receipts. We check receipts at the door. We we want to make sure that do you want to be a Raider? Is, you know, or are you just trying to say you you're a Raider? Because a real Raider, a real Raider, and the true Raider way is you're gonna back up your team no matter what. You're gonna back up your team 100 yeah. no matter what. Even if you don't agree with the choice, that's okay. If you're a true Raiders fan, though, you're not going to be mad about it and you're not going to talk bad about the team because what's the point of talking badly about your team? If it's your team, you don't want to say anything bad about them, right? Al Capitan Rafucho, if you have your brother or your sister and you love your brother and your sister, you're not going to go behind their back or even publicly and talk badly about your brother and sister that's horrible that's a horrible yeah. way of being uh, uh, uh someone's brother or sister right <clears throat> so it's the same thing if you say you're you're a raider fan and you want to be a part of the raider nation and you want to follow the raider way then you shouldn't talk badly about uh other yeah. raiders you should you shouldn't talk badly about people who are positive about, about the raiders and you definitely shouldn't say oh our team sucks like maybe our team's not doing very good but we don't want to we don't want to talk badly about our team that's a terrible thing to do uh negative energy al capitan rofucho is not for raider transplant raider transplant all raider transplant believes in is positive energy positive energy for everybody very important yeah exactly and i just figured it out because right now I just see because right now I'm a South American citizen living in North Carolina. I know it's very, very tough because there's like a few Raider fans in South Carolina and North Carolina, but I see it because right now it's part of the nation. It's part of the DNA. Because if you grow up watching football in the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, and 2000s, you see Charles Woodson. If you see like the line speed kills, which is they have an amazing player. And they had Jim Plunkett. They had Kane Stabler. I mean, those guys are belong to be like a national treasure. And right now, those players are made it to like be part of the generation. I mean, we have the whole fans in the whole world because the Red Nation is worldwide. Because not only we just have fans in the United States, but also in Canada, United Kingdom. Also, there is Brazil, Mexico, which... They have a lot of them, a lot of them, because while they had to enjoy it for the soccer and baseball, but they have a lot of Mexican fans wearing out for the Raiders jersey, supporting for the team. And I really like it. I really like it because they're very passionate because it's about the great tradition. Tradition, fans, passion, and, of course, loyalty to the team. Because I've been seeing like a lot of fans showing up for the loyalty and respect for the team. Because I know because for the first time, I mean, the first time that I was on the show with Captain Jack and OG Daniel, they teaching us for the great generation of the Raiders they had for over like more 40 years. I mean, and I just understood about for the history and I know about for the new generation for the Raiders. And I really get it. I really get it because it really gets passionate. And when... Josh McDennis and Deb Ziegler got fired up and they just brought from the Tony Pierce. That's what it really feels like because he just brought the mentality. He just brought the old right away back in the day for the football. I mean, that's very amazing because he just embraced it like the rate of football. And all those years, all those years, we became like very positive because it's always like the mentality of the champion, the mentality of a leader. That's what we wanted too, because we just wanted to be like positive things, not negative things, just wanted to keep positive. And when Al Davis said just win, baby, it just like it clicked at a very moment because right now there's nothing can stop us. There's nothing can stop us because we are the nation. I mean, we gotta be there like at all the stuff things to celebrate the good times. I mean, it's gonna be like really amazing. And Tony Shepard is say. You gotta be there through the third times to celebrate the good times. And Tony Shepard to say, fans, we are in fair weather fans. I mean, I get it, I get it, because right now the Red Nation, it's on DNA. 
it's on and DNA. When it comes to Sunday or even like a Thursday or Monday night football, it always be watching the Raider football because you have to be ready because right now we had a destroying nightmare for the rivals right now, but there's only, only, only nation in the whole world, and that's the Raider Nation, and there's nothing can stop us. So there's the Raider Nation, which is everybody. So you cannot stop us. Absolutely. Absolutely, Rafa. Well said, Al Capitan Rafucho. I was going to tell you that because you are a multilingual uh, content creator, which is fantastic. Um, I, I You remember that the Raiders were the first ones to start doing multilingual football radio. They did both uh, the Spanish and the uh, when we were at the Oakland Raiders, they also did Tagalog, which is the Filipino language. That's that's the language that I speak, Al Capitan Rafucho. So, uh, like I said, the Raiders are always changing. It's so great that uh, your uh, content creator with multi language. I I I I've, I've seen some of the stuff you do where you actually get very excited. You should do that when you start watching the Raider games too. This yeah, coming no. year, when you watch the Raider games, you should do the. <laughs> Touchdown! <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and and I was thinking about it because I, I was bringing up the idea to make like a, a Spanish play-by-play -play for the Raiders. That and would be fun. First, yeah, and of course I have a fun fact because I have no clue what should I do for the play-by-play. -play. Should I do in my native language? Is it Spanish? I mean, that was very good. And Let me ask you a question, El, El Capitan Rafucho. Is the native language that you speak, though, I know it's Spanish, but is it like a Venezuelan style Spanish? Yeah, it's, it's like the Venezuelan right? style. Yeah. It's going to be like a very Caribbean style because I know I'm from South America, which is exactly in Venezuela, but I brought like the, the Caribbean flow and I know the R because I know the letter R is very, like, very, very clear because. Someone did someone did just link it in like the R amount, but let just sound for the pronounce of the very well the R, but I know how to get it. But I know that I've got to figure it out because in some point I just made like a short video of Josh Jacobs putting out for the touchdown for the Raiders against for the New York Giants. And it makes me feel like very comfortable to see like a Spanish play by play and protect the shield. They just made like a very good comment and say El Capitan. The go the Spanish play by play. That's what I needed because I just brought a lot of energy to put in out for the play by play. And the next season is coming out for the 2024, 2025. I mean, I mean, this is gonna be like a great opportunity to see my boys in Spanish during the play by plays when it comes to the Raiders. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was gonna, uh, I was gonna suggest maybe what you can do is. Um, not necessarily the Mexican side, but actually, how about the Venezuelan, like you said, the island side? Yeah. Because I be, I don't know, I don't even know if Venezuelan or uh, Venezuela, I think is on that side. Um, I don't know. Is that is Venezuela kind of closer uh, to it's Colombia? Closer to Colombia and Brazil. In Brazil, okay. So yeah. yeah, so I don't know. Like I I know that the NFL is going to Brazil. And when I went to Brazil, they were speaking yeah. Portuguese, so it wasn't it wasn't really Spanish. It was kind of like a like por the the it was a very uh, different style of Spanish. It was Portuguese, uh, like a Portuguese style, a little closer to Spain. So with uh, with uh, Venezuelan and and Colombia, that you said that's more of like a Caribbean style Spanish, right? Like a like there's exactly. a flavor to it. <clears throat> Yeah, exactly. And of course, I have a lot of difference because right now we just live into a, like a, it's very close to the Iceland. And of course, it's very close to Colombia and Brazil. I mean, I just get it. And right now it feels like very like a great movement for right now. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, it's been like a great pleasure. It's been like a great episode of this episode of Similar Black Experience Draft Countdown 24. So right now on this weekend, you got it, Raider Transplanter, along with Protect the Shield, Captain Jack, and Stuart Scheinberg, as known as the one and only Stu. They're going to talk it about for the draft talk on Sunday, which is at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Time. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, I have a big surprise for you. Because on this weekend, I'm going to interview 
one of those tight ends for the North Carolina Tar Heels, and his name is Court Halsey, a tight end for the North Carolina Tar Heels. So it's going to be updated tomorrow at morning, so you're not going to miss that, folks. You're not going to miss it. So. That's fantastic, El Capitan Refrigio. Congratulations. That's always amazing to get a chance to talk to the players, especially North Carolina Tar Heels uh, College. That's that's fantastic. Exactly. Congratulations. That's amazing. Maybe you yeah. might even be able to ask him about Drake May, right? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. There's a like a great, great one. Yeah. But, yes. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you, Angelo, Raider Transplanter, for giving us like great details. And of course, it's been like a great episode of Zero and Black Experience. Remember, hit the like button, subscribe, and of course, ring the bell for the notifications of my YouTube channel, El Capitan yeah. Refugio, which is available on every social media. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Rumble, Twitch, all about for the social media. So I just wanted to tell you, have a great night, have a great weekend, and of course, in those wars with all Davis, just win, baby. Have a great Eastern. There you go. El, Cap El Capitan Refugio, one more time for me, para mi, can you do that whole thing in Spanish and then close it out? All right. I just wanted to tell you in Spanish. Muy buenas noches a todos y por supuesto, a todos los que están escuchando a través de mi canal de YouTube, vamos a gritar hasta lo más profundo de todos, vamos a gritar Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great night.